SWAT team raided him because the, the the tree trimming people because they all most of these these service people get money on the side uh, ratting folks out. They should be civilly sued over it. That's a big secret. The plumber, the whatever, is actually spying on you. They saw the tattoo of the gun and raided him as if a handgun's even illegal in Maryland. I mean, I mean, this is the culture we live in. It's totally sick. You probably just hit it on the head there, Alex. Um, I'm guessing that that's probably why they raided us right there. Got a 3% <laughs> on my neck. Um, Very evil. Now, <laughs> now, with that said, what happened is they came to us after they raided EP Armory. Um, we became aware of that. We realized uh, what their determination on EP Armory's product had been. Um, after we got a chance to look at that determination, it became apparently obvious to us that the ATF had made a giant mistake. Their determination, it, the only determination that anybody other than the ATF has seen so far, is based on fiction. The uh, the process that they described in their determination and the way that they described it, saying that the, uh, the which made this product into a firearm, is 100% false. They know it's false, they were informed it's false, but they didn't really care too much about that. What they cared about was attempting to make threats against us in order to gain access to private information and to uh, you know make our life somewhat difficult so we start getting uh, you know calls and harassment from them uh, Monday of last week and they're saying listen you give us this stuff or we're gonna come in we're gonna raid every single one of your buildings we're pretty much gonna make your life miserable um, but if you make this deal with us under the table underhanded nobody's gonna know about it don't worry don't worry we know that your customers they'll be really mad at you if you give this to us so don't worry we're, we won't let anybody know that you you worked with us it's gonna be fine it's gonna be okay everything's good we know you're a legitimate business we don't want to this is business. illegally give us stuff that they're not supposed to get without warrants this is nsa style stuff but worse or we're going to set you up this is gangster mafia thug america yeah and and so what we did is we uh you know we went out and like uh, any legitimate business would do when they're being threatened by the mafia, uh, we went to the judicial system and asked for help. We asked to get a, a temporary restraining order, which we got based on the merits of, of uh, you know, what we presented in front of the judge. Um, now, what they did is on Friday, they went in and uh, they pretty much said, hey, you know, this is a criminal proceeding, this, that, and the other. You can't stop it. Um, and they got the judge to clarify that the restraining order um, did not prohibit lawfully um, lawful criminal proceedings, um, at which point in time they went to a different judge, got themselves a, a, a search warrant, and they made good on their threats. They came by on Saturday. Um, they went through every building that we had. They grabbed our computer systems. They grabbed our products. They grabbed uh, paperwork and information. I mean, some of the stuff they grabbed is, is kind of silly to some degree. Um, but I like how they were dressed up to play Army, though. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, it, you know, one of the guys uh, that was there... <laughs> I said uh, hi to him. And I shook his hand, and he comes up to me, and he's, uh, you know, I, uh, he told me his name, and I, uh, you know, I said, oh, I'm Dimitri, and he said, oh, I know who you are. We got a brief on you this morning, and I'm like, well, what's that supposed to mean? And he's like, oh, well, we we heard all about your, you know, military record and and this other kind of things, just in case things went south. And I, I laughed, and I told the guy, I wear a tie for a living. I'm a law-abiding citizen. There's no reason to come into this place um, dressed like you're, you're you're going through Ramadi. Or but you're leadership. the enemy because you're a veteran. You're listed as the number one enemy publicly by the traitor government. We have a Vichy collaborator, banker-occupied government on record. They're the enemy. They declare veterans the number one enemy. You have been declared the enemy. Well, and I can tell you this, Alex. One one compliment I did get from uh, from one of the agents during the raids is that he was actually afraid to talk to me because of how much I talk to the uh, uh, the media and how open I am about the situation, which is one of those things they absolutely should be afraid to talk to us. In a situation like, like this, it's 100% them that should fear us. Well, they're going to go to Nuremberg. When we take this country back, people that have abused the American people are going to be standing tall before the man. Absolutely. And it's, it's also it's one of those things when, you know, when I'm discussing this with these people and I'm like, you know that your information is false. You know that you're doing this based on information that is 100 percent incorrect. But yet you continue to do this. And the answer that I get back is, well, that's the information that's been passed down from higher. So it's almost like talking to, you know, an Auschwitz prison guard who's at, you know, why, why are you holding them inside of these cells over here? Why are you doing this? Oh, well, that's the, that's the information that was passed down to me from higher. You know what I mean? It's absolutely ludicrous. The behavior. Well, let's break down and talk about how they're well, what they're claiming is a full firearm. 
Because, I mean, I've seen the cases where they'll claim a barrel is a firearm. They'll claim a flash suppressor. I saw that case of a while back where they said a shoestring was. A shoestring, absolutely. They can claim, and that's the power that, that apparently we've given them. These people have literally declaimed a shoestring to be a firearm in the past. Well, here's an example. The federal courts have said they can d d define a firearm. So they can define a cumulus cloud as one. That's the same thing with the EPA. The Supreme Court said they can define what a pollutant is. Well, they're now saying water vapor and carbon dioxide is. So they can tax it. Stay there, guys. I want to come back with the CEO uh, of Ares Armor, AriesArmor.com, and talk about the evil products they had and where this is going. Will the ATF be able to put them out of business? And, of course, they're going to come for you next. By the way, the ATF is now visiting folks that buy more than 500 rounds of ammo. There's a purge of gun owners. Ten ways true feminism is under attack. And this is an article I'll be covering after our guests leave us at about 45 after. But I want to go back to these folks because I've had a lot of gun dealers contact me over the years and give us documents and give us intel. We broke that the ATF was making people file reports on folks buying more than two firearms outside of law years ago. But the gun shops never want to be on air. They're scared. And... Uh, these guys are not. And the attitude that's going to win is realizing we've done nothing wrong and laughing at the system. And, yeah, they may come after us. They may set us up. They may kill us. I mean, I, don't, I know the globalists are murdering killers. They might kill me next week. Hope they don't. They might set me up and put me in prison. They might drug me. I mean, you know, who knows? The whole point is, is that that's just the way it is then, Jack, because I'm not going to get down and lick your boots. You got it? Now, going back to the CEO, and, and, and of course, I want to get um, Ms. Diaz's take, uh, who also works there at the company who's with him, uh, Dimitri Karas, uh, a veteran. So, so they were very upset over the fact that you were a veteran. Uh, break down why they were there, what they were claiming they were looking for. What did they want a few weeks ago under the table? What they, what they wanted was they wanted our customer list, and it was a specific product that was made in Palmer that's an 80% receiver. Now, in every determination that the ATF has ever made in the past, there are five things that are required for, um, for in the AR style of 80% of receivers to be left undone that the customer would have to complete in order for it to not be considered a firearm. Those things are your fire control pocket, your uh, hammer pin, your trigger pin, your safety selector through hole, and your trigger through hole. All, all of those five operations are left uncompleted on the product in question. Um, again, their, their issue with it was uh, about the manufacturing process. Now the manufacturing process happened and they were wrong. They're completely wrong. They know that they're wrong. They've been informed that they're wrong, but that didn't really seem to matter to them. Um, and what's funny about this is I go to the courts and I say, hey, I'm being extorted because someone is trying to come in unjustfully and take you know, this information and take this stuff from us. Um, and this isn't a contested issue. We want to handle this in the courts. We don't want to handle this through um, you know, the uh, conventional means that the ATF likes to use of just you know, bashing in people's doors. We're honestly lucky that the FBI's hostage roasting team didn't show up for this event. But um, apparently that that didn't that is not the way they wanted it to happen. I mean, we'd asked the judge to for actually to declare whether these things are firearm. We wanted to go into court with evidence, with proof, with you know everything that was going on to handle this that way. But that's not the you know that's not the uh, the way that the federal government does things apparently. And uh, I can tell you this. Um, when uh, when we had actually contacted you, it was, it was Lindy here that's uh, that's with me today. She's my assistant. She mostly does everything, and uh, I usually take the credit for it. But she's the uh, the the real power behind the scenes. Um, but she was the one who actually contacted you guys. It was right after the judge had clarified that uh, that order, and we were fully expecting the ATF to come in at that moment. Um, and it was we'd sent all the employees home, and it was uh, me and her sitting there waiting for them to show up. And uh, let me the, the, the conversations that we had was literally, well, how do you think they're going to come in here? Do you think we're both going to live through this raid? You know, <laughs> and it's because you you watch these are the same people that pulled off Waco. These are the same people that are are you know have been giving guns to the cartels for years. These are the Ruby same Ridge. No, no. Let me tell you. I mean, the, let me tell you the ATF. The ATF was the masterminds of Oklahoma City and even tested blowing up another rider truck. And we even know the ATF people that were there on the ground confirmed off hotel receipts. So let me tell you, they are the most evil force in America.
Well, and they've been like, and here's the other thing: we've had reports from our customers where our customers will leave the store, they'll get pulled over right out, right across the street, um, questioned about what their business is with us, and when they they ask the officers question them, they'll you know the officer will just uh, like run off, be like, "Here's your ID card back. All right, go about your business." Yeah, that no, they're putting them in a suspicious persons report because the new terrorists are gun owners. They've publicly announced it, and they've got the police collaborating with them as well. Yeah, well, this is also one of those situations. I mean, this is a, a clear-cut situation of uh, an overreaching government wanting to get people's private information. And I get asked, why, why did they want that information? Is it about the guns? Is it about the guns? Why did the NSA, why, why are they recording all of our phone conversations and keeping databases of our of our text messages? It's, it has nothing to do with this. This isn't just the Second Amendment. This is a huge, huge, huge um, overreaching government that's coming into your life. They want to know what you're doing in your living room. They want to know what you're doing in your kitchen. They'd love to know what you're